I want to start with you, Carol Lennig, um, because this is fast moving. There was a lot of analysis from very, very smart, former, very, very senior DOJ officials, people like Mary McCord, who said this was not clear cut in terms of legal strategy and counterintelligence strategy, what DOJ should do. They decided to narrowly appeal Eileen Cannon's uh, ruling, but they have left open this appeal to the 11th Circuit. It seems that Bill Barr's public comments about the strength of the DOJ case seem to be consistent with how DOJ views its evidence. Absolutely. Bill Barr is really um, leading the boat there in terms of reminding conservatives how the rule of law really works, how criminal investigations really work, and whose property these documents actually are. Uh, the ones in Mar-a-Lago are indeed government property and gathering up various notations or cartoons or whatever might be slipped in amid, amid the classified records, as Barr correctly points out, can be seized and then returned. There is not a, a need for those to go through some special master program in order for them to fairly be returned to the former president's possession. But let's start with your good question, which is really where are we right now? And where we are right now is that the Department of Justice had to make a call, a hard call, when it believes national security is potentially irreparably to be damaged by records that were of uncertain security in essentially a beach club in Palm Beach. These records were so sensitive in some cases, as my colleague Devlin Barrett and I reported uh, earlier this week, some of them were so sensitive that there's no chance in the world that anyone at Mar-a-Lago had the authority to even look at them, much less move them around or decide how to store them. And so the Justice Department chose to say, we'd like you to revisit this. We'd like to remind you what's on the line here in terms of possible damage to national security about other documents we don't know. We had a search warrant. We spent nine hours at Mr. Um, Trump's part-time home. Uh, but there may be more records. There may be other places. There may be other locations. And we can't not review this material that we've obtained as we continue a criminal investigation that has huge national security implications. Frank, Chuck Rosenberg gave us a, a, a nice frame around which to look at the DOJ subpoena. Um, it was judges don't like to be told what to do by a higher court, the appellate court, and judges don't like to be asked to go back and revisit and reverse their own decision. But Judge Eileen Connor put herself in the box that she finds herself in, where she's been rebuked as either being ignorant of national security imperatives in the United States of America or indifferent to them. And that's the bottom line. Bill Barr even thinks so. And again, he's just an important beacon of the far right, who was more willing than anyone in, in modern history to put their fingers on the scale as the head of DOJ. It's so bad, even he thinks that the special master argument was a red herring. Where do you see DOJ's aggressive assertion? Your Honor, the totality of your ruling essentially is contributing to the national security threat. And they explain this because they actually attach, Nicole, a, uh, a letter from the current head of counterintelligence at the FBI, uh, a position that I held. Um, and, and he explains the problem here. And you and I were talking about this uh, just a few days, Nicole, ago, where I said, Nicole, I, I'm afraid that the criminal investigation has come entirely to a halt. And there were other people, I, after that appearance, I proceeded to read lots of people disagreeing with me. No, you can parse this out. You can do some of the criminal case without using the, the documents from the search warrant. But in this DOJ filing, it's confirmed. They've stopped. They've yeah. stopped. Because the FBI, I know, as, as I told you, it says, look, we don't want to incur the wrath of a judge. We don't. We particularly don't want to jeopardize an ongoing criminal case. So we're not going to play games here figuring out what interviews we can do and what documents we can or can't use. But more importantly, in this attached letter, the head of counterintelligence is saying that the risk assessment, that damage assessment under the DNI, is actually carried out by FBI agents on the ground, right? So the DNI goes across the intelligence community, says, who's got documents in play here? Tell us what, what, how bad this is. But then the FBI agents have to go out and interview these people and figure it out. 
Well, guess what? Those are counterintelligence agents from the same case. And, and what the head of counterintelligence is saying in his letter is, look, they're inexorably linked. The criminal case and the National Security Review, uh, a damage assessment, we can't separate those. What are we supposed to do? Ask somebody about the nuclear document and where it came from and whether he saw it or others saw it and then ignore that for the criminal case? Are we supposed to use other agents? And how do we separate that? And it can't be done. So we've learned it stopped. The, the criminal investigation has actually come to a halt. Frank, I never doubted you. I saw some of that guff on Twitter, but I, I, um, I think our viewers know that you speak from deep experience and you're usually holding usually no more than what you say so that you turned out to be right was no surprise to me. But I, I just want to press on this because I, I feel like what you're saying is probable cause for the crime is the violation of these classified... I mean, the, the, the mishandling of the documents is the threat to national security. You cannot separate them in any artificial, you know, incompetent or inexperienced or, 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 or boneheaded legal opinion. You cannot separate the two. Right. The substance of an espionage violation or a mishandling violation is indeed the classified documents. And the doc classified documents belong to the executive branch of the government. He has no, Trump has no property interest in this. They laid it all out like law school 101 for the judge. Look, we're, we're happy to, to give back um, all the personal documents, photos, whatever, whatever you want. Um, except those that are mixed and intermingled with the classified, because that shows how, how careless careless this uh, storage was, so we're going to keep those. Um, but, Judge, we're not about to show a special master nuclear documents, TS, SI, that ain't happening, is what they're saying. I mean, they're going full bore here. They're going, we don't buy this special master thing at all. We're going over your head.